Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Coming your way on today's show, a news and rumors mailbag where I take questions from all of our loyal subscribers. So much to talk about, so many questions to get to. So let's kick it off with Dave in the Desert with this $5 Super Chat. Send Jimmy Garoppolo to Seattle if they want him. 49ers winning seasons were despite Jimmy, not because of him. Trey will do everything Jimmy did and much more. Dave, thank you for your donation. Love you being fired up on the show and you bring in the energy. So you send Jimmy Garoppolo to Seattle. I'm frankly not scared with Garoppolo playing with the Seahawks because the roster around him isn't all that good. So I don't think he's going to cause nightmares for the faithful or this coaching staff. And frankly, I think he's a good fit on Seattle because Pete Carroll has shown that he has put the handcuffs on Russell Wilson in years past. That's why he demanded a trade to the Denver Broncos. He wants to establish the run, play that smash mouth downhill type of football, and Garoppolo's fine with that. Nor do you want Garoppolo chucking it 30, 40, 50 times throughout a game. As for the 49ers having a lot of success with Garoppolo, he's won 71% of his starts. I think you have to give him credit for that. And he has helped right the ship for San Francisco after a couple of down years with Chip Kelly. And before that, uh, it was really, really ugly, right? So Garoppolo has done a lot to change the culture in San Francisco after Harbaugh. And I think he's been an instrumental figure for the Niners getting back on track. Now, has he put the team on his back all the time? No, sometimes, yes. Has he performed well at the end of some games? Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, again, he is a somewhat limited quarterback who's about middle tier. And when the Niners made it to the NFC Championship game back in 2019, it was built on the defense led by Robert Sala and their run game in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And this past year, it's not like... He wreaked havoc against the Cowboys in the wild card round, or he lit up the Green Bay Packers of the Los Angeles Rams in those three playoff games. So to a certain degree, you have points there. Next question from Chua Lore. Do you think the 49ers need to address offensive line next year in the draft? Maybe. They addressed offensive line the past two drafts with Aaron Banks, Jalen Moore, Spencer Burford. So... They've addressed offensive line as well as in the UDFA market. So in the draft and after the draft. Now, what happens with Mike McGlinchey? He's going into the final year of his deal. If you move on from him, you're going to need to find a right tackle. Is that guy Jalen Moore? Do you search for that in the free agency market? The 49ers offensive line going into 2022, no question of concern. Who plays left guard? Who plays right guard? Who plays center? So it really depends on what happens this year throughout training camp. I don't think signing J.C. Treader is out of the equation either if Jake Brendel struggles. So, yeah, the offensive line going into this year, a concern. And if it continues to be a concern all throughout 2022, then they may have to address it in free agency as well as the draft in 2023. Come on, Niners, 33. If you had to sign one player in NFL free agency, who would you want to sign, Odell Beckham Jr. or Julio Jones? I think at this point, I'd go OBJ, even though he's coming off that torn ACL. I understand that's a little bit of a concern. It's the second time he's torn an ACL, but he's younger. And with the Rams, he had this renaissance of sorts where he was looking really good with Matthew Stafford. He also sent out something cryptic recently where he said, I had been playing the last several weeks of the regular season with the torn ACL. And if that's the case, he played really well and then maybe just fully tore uh, during the Super Bowl. But I'd rather go OBJ. I think he's the better player at this point. He's a younger player. Even though he's coming off the torn ACL, the production has been there. With Julio Jones, he's going downhill a little bit. And injuries for him, they've been a big concern as well. So I go OBJ. But what say you get your opinions into the comment section right now obj jj for julio jones let me know now make sure you subscribe to us on the call-in app what is it it's like twitter spaces but even better after every one of our live shows we go live on call-in for a live interactive podcast where we do a segment and then i take your calls for the remainder of the show and it's really cool to be able to interact with all of you you make a profile like you do on twitter spaces and you can call into the show and interact with me chatsports.com slash 49ers call in download the app on your iphone or your android the links for that in the comment section and the description of this video bk from the bay chase do you have any concerns over this Trey Lance arm fatigue or lack of experience. If I have concerns among these two talking points here, it's not the arm fatigue, it's the lack of experience. But with the lack of experience, I think that Lance, it's beneficial for him 
throughout OTAs and minicamp, which already happened, and then training camp coming up in the future, for him to get all of the reps. He's going to be able to get those reps, to work out the kinks, to work out the flaws, to gain some of that really vital experience for a team that's ready to compete this year. And with Lance, he needs to improve the accuracy. There's no question about that. Some of his decision-making has to get a little bit better, but he has everything you want in a starting quarterback. 6'4", 225, really strong arm, can complete balls at all three levels, can run, pose a different threat to the defense, which makes the 49ers offense a lot more explosive and less predictable. The arm fatigue thing, I think that's a last year story that people are talking about. It's in the news because people are talking about it right now, but I think that's more so from last year as compared to this year. But we'll see when training camp comes around because if he misses a practice, my goodness, people are just going to crumble, including me. Vivian, with this question, I think Danny Gray should be on the team. He has hands and speed, and Lance can throw him bombs. He'll be on the team. No question about that, Vivian. He was a third-round pick, and you're right. He does have speed where he can get up and down the field vertically. He can take the top off of the defense and catch him deep balls. He has yards after the catch ability, which I really like especially going back to what he was able to do at SMU, that skill set really fits well in this Niners offense. Now, I think the start, given the emergence and the play of Jawan Jennings, he's going to get more of those wide receiver three reps, but I think Gray can see the field as a rookie because he values something very, very important and valuable, and that is his speed to get up and down the field. How many games will the Niners win? And maybe Danny Gray will help them win some of those games. I've said 10 all along, same record as last year. Either way, you let me know. Chase Senior Burner, nice. What if Kyler Murray doesn't? Oh, Chase Senior Burner. Yes, my last name is Senior. Not going to name my kid Chase so that he's Chase Senior Junior. And yes, when I was in high school, middle school, elementary school, people did say, Senior Senior. And I'd be like, yeah, that's funny. It's a play on words. Good job. What if Kyler Murray doesn't re-sign with the Arizona Cardinals and Lance is a bust? Would Kyler Murray be a good trade candidate? You think about his fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And he's a pretty interesting and fascinating case study is Kyler Murray. Because each of the last two years, and let's first start by saying this. Each year, he's improved and he's gotten better to a certain degree. But the last two years, a little bit of a concern, right? He takes the league and the world by storm and plays exceptional to start the year. Then at the end of the year, he really struggles, and the team struggles too. And that's where his body language is really, really poor. And as a starting quarterback, as the face of the franchise, that can't happen. When he's slumping over and he just is reeking of negativity, that's bad energy that then translates to the rest of the team. Now, as a player in Kyle Shanahan's offense, would he fit? I think it'd be an interesting fit. It would give Kyle Shanahan a unique weapon. He has that right now with Lance as a dual threat guy, but you're asking this question if Murray doesn't re-sign and Lance is a bust. I think you got to find a star quarterback. Would it be Kyler Murray? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Kyle would want to go from dual threat quarterback to another dual threat quarterback. Kyler Murray's height a little bit concerning, but he has done things with the football that, frankly, I've never seen quarterbacks do, whether it be Russell Wilson or Fran Tarkenton or Doug Flutie, who are similar prototypes in terms of build for Kyler Murray. Great him as a quarterback, though. A, B, C, D, or F. I think right now he's in that B range. I think anything more than that, it's a little too lofty. Anything less than that is disrespectful, but either way, let me know right now. Evan Henders, should Brock Purdy be a Terrell Pryor 2.0? They are wildly different quarterbacks. Terrell Pryor, Brock Purdy, just not the same guy. I know that Purdy had some nice pocket instincts at Iowa State, so much experience. He's going to be competing for quarterback three. That is if Nate Sudfeld becomes quarterback two because if Garoppolo's on this team, Sudfeld becomes the three, and then Brock Purdy might be a practice squad candidate. I'm not going to compare Purdy and Terrell Pryor. Uh, Pryor was a taller, longer, better athlete who actually had some good years in the NFL as a wide receiver. Brock Purdy would never sniff playing wide out at the NFL level. Pop Johnson, weakest and strongest position group, best host, Chase. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Pop Johnson. This is the last question in our mailbag, by the way. Strongest position group, I'm going to go defensive line. I think they're literally two, three deep along every single position uh, position at edge as well as defensive tackle. They could be one of the best defensive lines in the league. I think you also put linebacker in there. Um, 
weakest position group has to be offensive line. No question about offensive line and safety. I think Jimmy Ward is disrespected often. He's an all-pro caliber safety and doesn't get the recognition or the respect of that, but is Talano Hufanga going to be the other safety? And then outside of that, they lack some depth there. So strongest defensive line, weakest offensive line, and maybe safety. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can be a part of our mailbags. It's a great segment that we're able to do every single week where we get to chop it up. You get to ask me or tell me anything that you're thinking, saying, asking about San Francisco, youtube.com slash 49ers TV. Subscribe to the channel right now.